Welcome, everybody. This is our very first BTS Spark Connections uh, webinar video, which we, uh, we, we do to introduce people and organizations who are working with BTS Spark. And with this very first one, we have our very first partner collaboration with the, the Center for Educational Effectiveness, or CEE, as they're known. And we're starting this um, collaboration, this partnership, because of the work of CEE and the work of BTS Park really aligns. So I'm really happy um, today to introduce two people, uh, one who works with at CEE and one who works with CEE, and we're going to talk through how their work interacts with our coaching. So on the screen, we do have uh, Eric Boltz, who's a VP of Research and District Engagement at CEE. Nice to, nice to see you, Eric. Thanks for having me, Sean. Uh, flattered to be on and uh, eager to continue to develop our partnership. Have really enjoyed uh, uh, co-authoring blogs here as of recently. Yeah, that's been really fun. And if you haven't looked at their, the blog um, on the CEE website, we've got a couple of ones that we've written together up there, but lots of really good, interesting reads. And we also have um, Doug Kaplinki, who's principal at Adams Elementary, and was he was also the 2017 Washington State Principal of the Year. So we're honored to have a Principal of the Year with us today, Doug. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sean. And uh, Eric, it's good to see you as well again, and uh, appreciate this partnership. Yeah, fantastic. And we're going to hear from Doug on the ways that Adams Elementary has been working with CEE and utilizing their data surveys. And for anyone, I'm sure people who are watching this have seen or heard me before, but if not, I'm Sean Slade, Head of Education for North America at BTS Park. One of, one of the reasons we began to develop this partnership and talk about this partnership is that I think it's 67% of all um, school improvement innovations fail in the first year. And very often they fail because they're not actually looking at the data or understanding the data or really looking at the way that that data is being employed at the school level. So what I'd like to hear, and maybe um, Eric, you can start us off on this, if you can outline some of the work that CEE is doing around collecting data, and then we're going to turn it over to Doug to hear about how his school has been utilizing some of that data. Absolutely, uh, Sean, and again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, one of the things that we do at CEE is we really measure culture. Uh, we measure culture from the systems level. We measure culture from the individual leadership level. Uh, we've been doing it for over 20 years, uh, started last century, Had a have had a long time uh, partnership with our uh, state education agency in Washington State. Uh, and have been used uh, for years and years with schools that are in improvement. We, we also provide services to schools who are not in improvement and have almost 1.8 million data sets uh, to date now around uh, what it means to actually measure school culture. And we look at school improvement a little differently than um, I think we look at it through the lens of federal policy in the United States. So we really try to get people to look at data in a continuum. We start with the demographics. So what we believe is you have to deeply know who you're serving inside of your school system. And that's uh, inclusive of all constituents, so staff, students, family, uh, and community. Once you understand that demographic, it's critical to know what they're thinking. So we move from the demographic to perceptual arena. And uh, I'm biased, but I think we have some of the best perceptual data collection tools uh, in, in the United States. Um, so if you're not working with us, um, I, I know it would be a high value for you to do that. Ultimately, we use that demographic and perceptual data to begin to tweak context. So contextual data is our next data. We've had a lot of initiatives in the United States where uh, we talk about uh, contextual data. The acronym we're probably most familiar with right now is MTSS. So contextual data is kind of a fancy way of, of saying you really need to tweak your systems, your delivery systems in your school based on what you're learning on the demographic and perceptual side so that you're of service to your staff, to your students, to your families, uh, and to your communities. And being able to measure that data in a formative, if not annualized way, really allows uh, school leaders to, to tweak and make some nuanced adjustments to their contextual systems that 
that we find you know folks can't make without having that level of uh, data at their fingertips. And then ultimately, while we're led by federal policy to focus on achievement, and it is all about achievement, um, we believe that the way you get to achievement, because achievement data is ultimately that lagging indicator, uh, really reflecting everything else that happens both inside and outside of the schoolhouse. Um, we believe to get to that achievement data, it has everything to do with how well you know your demographic, how well you're willing to work with their, your demographics perceptions, and how willing you are to tweak your context uh, as a school or systems leader. If, if you truly a, a servant's heart, if you truly have a servant's heart and are able to do all those three things well, and you're committed to measuring those things, uh, not to mention having accountability partners in the context of coaching, which I know we'll get into later, um, we, we know through some work that we've done through some positive outlier analysis work in schools in Washington state, that it's schools that attend to those three domains that see that big gain ultimately in the achievement domain. So again, thank you for uh, letting us have the opportunity to be on. And uh, I know that might've sounded a little bit like a treatise or a dissertation, but uh, we really believe in looking at the data differently, measuring it constantly and serving our clients. Uh, that's fantastic. And I'm going to start calling you Dr. Bolts from now on after that. So you've already passed that first dissertation test. Well, some, some of the things you've mentioned, which I love about the work, is you keep talking about continuous improvement. So you're going back again and you're looking at the data and you're refining. I love the way that you're talking about school climate and culture um, being really key and how that academics are going to be coming as a consequence of the culture and the climate in the school. Um, so, so kudos to that. I think you're doing a really great job and we're really happy to align with you. Doug, if I can turn to you, you've worked with CEE for a, a little while now. So can you tell us a little bit about how you've been using this data and maybe how some of the, the transformations at your school have gone because of that? Yeah, Sean, and again, thank you uh, for the opportunity here to. Uh, to work with you guys, uh, two incredible companies with BTS and, and CEE. I, I want to kind of highlight, um, I've been with CEE from a standpoint of a client being a client for a number of years. Um, the So often we get lost in the literacy and math scores and, and some of those components. And one of the things we had to, uh, I, I started way back in 2008 in a tiny little urban school district. And so I, I finally learned what CEE is. And I've kind of watched how CEE has um, developed, grown, and then uh, kind of created more products um, as, as like all of us in schools and everything else. Um, and then uh, formulated a partnership um, with, uh, with Dr. John Steech and, and Eric Bowles with, uh, with the company, um, really learning and understanding what climate and culture really means. What do, how do we look at the, the data? understanding working in like say 45, 90 day or even shorter span cycles and in, in the inquiry cycles, identical to what we would do and look at with uh, within literacy scores or math scores. Um, but the thing that I've, I've kind of come over over time and, and had a, a chance to kind of develop and I think Eric and I have kind of collaborated on this a ton is what are the human bridges? Where are those human bridges that go from the relational trust to school improvement and how do we go through that process and how do we put our fingerprint on something like that and then of course giving those students that aspect of how can they be their own an, an author of their own learning including those parents and so I think with uh, EES and the and the survey data with the climate and, and those some of the, the the data points that come out oftentimes you know you might get a staff member saying I'm doing my job but oh man I don't I don't know about this guy over here or maybe it might be you know, the parents that are just asking for extra support and help. And you know, what are the resources? Do they know where those resources are? Um, and then I always turn back to the student data. You know, I, it's one of those things where um, Eric and I have looked at uh, some data points and, and Eric might be able to share a little bit more about some of those data points um, at Adams or even at other locations that I've been. Um, just kind of looking at how do we dive into those data points? Where were the areas? And, and what were the initial steps? So when we went in initially and a couple of years ago, where were things, um, where were the challenges and where could we move forward? And we looked at some different areas, um, isolation. We looked at parents on feeling, uh, did they feel comfortable walking in the school? Did they feel comfortable having those resources? Did the staff members feel comfortable having conversations either in a PLC with administration 
And then again, going back to the students. Um, so it really hits all your stakeholders. Um, and it's really, in my mind, it really comes back to those human bridges of relationships and the rela relational trust uh, and, and how you transform, you know, how do you transform that school? Um, and, and fortunately, I've had CEE as a connecting partner. Um, and, and again, with the, the majority of the success that um, my, my staff has had or the success that other staff that I've been a part of, I, I feel like I'm a teammate in the trenches with them because you're looking at things together and you have to be super reflective. It's a humbling process, but it's a, that humbling process really allows us to grow as leaders as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I love I loved the way you were talking about developing that trust and those relationships. It's one thing that uh, we at BTS Spark are really keen about and really it's really core to what we believe is that leadership is really a human endeavor. And in fact, we were talking the other day about, we had a white paper come out last year that we um, called Messy Leadership and, and how leaders and schools have actually thrived during um, the COVID pandemic. And if you look down to what some of those parameters were about why they succeeded, it was because they were leaders who didn't necessarily lead in the old archetypal way of leadership. So people who, who were not, they weren't the person who said, I have the answer, follow me, this is the way that we go. And the ones that succeeded were the ones that built trust, showed vulnerability, said, I don't know. And that actually that allowed the rest of the team and the rest of the school to come in as part of that team and with new ideas and new ways of looking at the issue. And so I love the way you were talking about that as well. One thing that I do know that you're keen about as well, um, Eric, and I believe um, Doug as well is, and this is something that really hits home with me, is this idea about the whole educator. We've talked about the whole child for a number of years now and really looking at more than just academics, but the social, the emotional, the, um, the mental, the physical connections that people have and learning that they have. And one thing that um, I've been pushing at BTS Spark, and it was part of my previous work, is looking at the whole educator. I wonder, Eric, if you can talk a little bit about how that intersects with um, the work at CEE as well. Well, Sean, I think it's a direct match. Uh, so when I take uh, when I take clients through their results, especially if we're looking at our uh, systemic survey, which we call the Educational Effectiveness Survey or the EES. It measures uh, nine domains around school improvement, um, also includes uh, aspects of diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, and some other and some other key areas. And, and, and where I typically go first with the client is we look at, and we wrote this in our second blog uh, together, Sean, we look at what we call the I versus they gap uh, at CEE. Um, and, and what we believe about leadership, I'm going to paraphrase a, a quote from Heifetz here is, you know, exactly what you said in the setup, great leadership, uh, we think really manifests in the leader who helps a community solve its own problems, as opposed to that leader who's always out in front. That becomes a shortcut strategy and can ultimately create dependency. So again, just really resonating with what you said there. And when we look at that I versus they gap, um, we're a funny breed in education with virtually every data set we have at our disposal. Um, what we've learned is that uh, particularly at the classroom teacher level, teachers generally feel better about their practice than they feel about their peers practice. So the gap in and of itself isn't a bad thing. Um, what we know is that if the gap is within a certain threshold, uh, then we have the conditions uh, likely to start to see success across those other nine school improvement domains that we also uh, measure uh, in inside of that instrument. Um, and so uh, I think a direct match in helping folks solve their problems, that's what we're looking for in a leader, and then really helping staff gain confidence in their peers. Um, and we've all had lots of experience in, in uh, this life if we've been fortunate enough, whether it's in athletics or in the performing arts or in the visual arts, we know what it feels like to be on a great team. And it's not necessarily the best five musicians that make the best music. It's the five musicians that have that wonderful chemistry that make the best music. And so we, we really help folks do that in a quantifiable, uh, measurable way. Yeah, I love, and, and I love how, like, 
speaking educator to educator, we're talking about the same things and we have the same desire to make it human, but I love how we can also bring the data sets in to show one, this is what the level of connection is. This is what the school climate's looking like. And this is some things that we can do uh, moving forward. It's one thing to work on the culture. It's another thing, as our friend John Hattie would say, you know, know thy impact, right? So we yeah. we really do believe in the measurables. It really is all about, like Doug said, those human connections. But there's nothing wrong with having a data set to, to quantify the, the, the positive steps that we're seeing folks take inside of schools. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, Doug, before we sort of jump into some of the more specifics about how um, CE and BTS Spark can collaborate, I wonder if you have any insights about how the data is being used at the school. Um, is having data around school climate and culture being beneficial in your conversations with teachers or with community or with parents? Yeah, so it, it's interesting. I think one of the um, one of the great things that uh, Eric, when when we brought Eric in to kind of look and, and we started at the ground level with our ILT, which is your instructional leadership team at the building level. Um, they they originally kicked it off at the district level, then we brought them in at the building level. Um, and then we identified where are those areas where we have grown. And I, I like the celebrating of wins, I think is something that we looked at in, in both the uh, student, um, the staff and, and parent not just looking at that as staff members. I think it was critical for us to bring in those key players, even though we were living in the land of Google. Uh, I think it was super important for us to get narrative and understanding what the narrative was. Why, was. why was the score as high as it was? Why did we make growth? Or the other side of it, you know, we were looking through, say, some parents and saying, why was this score? Maybe they weren't comfortable or heck, we've been using we've been using an email system or a call system, and nobody's answering the phone. And they've been marking, you know, the the call the the text system is really the best system that we need to kind of look at. So I think it was it, it's very reflective. And then how do you make those modifications? I think one of the other big issues um, for us and, and and for new leaders going in and working with BTS and and CE, I think it's really critical that you're having those individualized conversations, getting a lay of the land early on and understanding and spending that time, July and August is such a critical time. You think your job, your job starts the day, the, the day the superintendent calls you and, and offers you the position and you're starting to build those type of relationships and they start individual, they can start in teams, they start in groups. Um, but I think Eric really helped uh, and his team really broke down the opportunities to look at where can we grow, where can we keep growing? And then where are some areas, maybe some challenges that we can actually re-identify and really be reflective. Um, the thing that with the coaching model, I really appreciated when <laughs> Eric would put together like a 45 day cycle, but he would actually have kind of like a three week, you know, kind of a check in and here's some things. And for us, I was able to literally snag some different things from his coaching and then bring it over to the team. And it was an article. It was something we were looking for innovation and kind of a in a fifth grade model and, and crossing over the curriculum for say science and writing. And that model was something really cool. And that's something where BTS Spark, I think, does lends itself as well with them from the curricular side and that actually has that blend. And so uh, I, I think it's a it's a it's an incredible partnership that uh, the two companies are starting to kind of merge together. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice being able to get the. Um the data that we have or the data that you have and that schools have, and then showcase how, yep, you have the data, but you also want to start making these changes. And sometimes part of that change is really looking at the culture of the school. Are they ready for change? Do they understand what needs to happen? Are there difficult conversations that we need to touch on? Um, is there a different mindset or way of thinking? And that's a lot of where the coaching work that BTS Park does specifically with leaders, but also with others in um, the school and community comes to the fore. And so this little infographic we have here, and maybe we can just talk through it uh, for a minute, Eric, as we wind up, um, we're, we're taking the results from some of your school climate surveys, showcasing the reports that come out from CEE, and then aligning those back to some of our um, hexagons and mind maps and some of those mindsets that are really key for school leaders to change. Yeah, uh, we appreciate that. And one of the things I noted when I came on board uh, to CEE was 
while CEE traditionally has had just absolutely best in class tools, um, I think we're really good at quickly diagnosing, boy, this is an area that you may want to uh, continue to improve or an area that you may need to address. Um, and when folks would say, well, how do I do that? Uh, our response would be, you know, we're, we're the measurement company. We're going to come back and measure that again for you next year, um, which there's obviously a gap in there. So I think, you know, what comes between a data set and turning that data into great action uh, is a coach, is an accountability partner. And that's where I really see the synergy between our two organizations. And I know Doug can speak to this as well. He had just shared with me uh, recently some Washington State uh, principal data. Principals are literally under siege across the country. They are uh, stressed out thinking about leaving the profession. Um, in these last two years, we refer to them as the twin pandemics at CEE, both with political polarity uh, and then the COVID pandemic. Um, they're just in an absolutely reactionary mindset. So how do you move school change forward when literally you're you're putting out fires, you're substituting in the classroom, you're you're wiping lunch tables, uh, following Doug around at his school recently. Although I didn't jog with him, I think he's a little bit more athletic than I am, even though uh, we're roughly the same age. Um, watching him uh, sprint to an intersection and start directing traffic to uh, take care of student safety. So when, you, when you're in a schoolhouse and you're watching these things happen, um, if you don't have that coach, who can bring an objective set of eyes, who has the time to study the issue a little bit, like Doug alluded to, maybe bring some uh, potential resources to bear. And being that loving accountability check, um, the, the idea that you've got all the data in the world because we know schools are data rich, yet information poor, the translation, the translators oftentimes that coach. And I think that's, I think that's where there's synergy and where you have great data sets, and great coaching, then you ultimately get to actionable items and you're in that continuous cycle of improvement. So that's where I that's where I see our two organizations really working so well synergistically together and providing another layer of service. BTS provides a layer of service that CE traditionally has not provided. So we're excited to see where this goes. Yeah. And one and one thing we we do collect data, but we do but the data we collect tends to be around the individual school leader and what they're leadership abilities or mindsets are. So having this, this data that can feed back to a whole school, um, a whole faculty um, is just fantastic. And then as you can see, as we beautifully illustrated on our infographic here, this is meant to be a continuous cycle. Um, so we're not talking about a one-stop shop or um, something which is a drive-by. Hopefully people start are collecting the data using the data, understanding the data, but then looking at their climate and their cultures and the leadership that's in that school to really try and move their school forward. Um, we're gonna wrap it up there. Um, I'd like to give a big shout out to our very first participants in this BTS Spark Connections uh, mini webinar. So thank you very much, Doug and thank Eric. You. Um, if there are any final words, we have the URLs up there for both organizations, but any words of wisdom you'd like to leave with us, Doug? No, just uh, as leaders are listening, uh, just keep planting those seeds in the hearts and minds of kiddos and, and, uh, in, and take time, be present in the moment with your staff, uh, spend that time with those relationships. That's the critical piece of moving forward in any organization. And so um, I appreciate the, the mindset and the growth mindset that everybody has um, in both organizations. And, and thank you for allowing me to be a teammate in this process. More than welcome. Final word, Eric? Well, Sean, I would echo what Doug had to say. I, I just appreciated the opportunity to be on uh, today and share what we do. Um, we'd like to host you uh, sooner than later on our Outliers in Education podcast, and we'll, we'll uh will really play up the uh, the notion that behind every great leader is a great coach. And if leaders don't have coaches, um, we need to be vulnerable enough to be coached. And uh, so looking forward to doing some uh, some of that work as well uh, with you in the future, Sean. And we'll make that happen in the next couple months and, and keep this momentum flowing. Thanks again for the opportunity to uh, showcase a little bit about what we do. And I think we're just a very nice complimentary fit to the work uh, that's done by your organization. Fantastic. I couldn't have said it better myself. And uh, to you, Doug, and to all the other principals and teachers out there, thanks for all the effort. It's been a it's been a struggle the last 18 months, two years, but 
kudos to everybody that's still there teaching and leading and doing the right thing for kids. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, Eric. Good seeing you guys again.